Good evening, church. Welcome to Calvary Chapel, Lebanon's U-turn for Christ Friday night service. Where you're here, your family, welcome to our living room. We're going to stand and praise the, our, our Lord and Savior, but first let's go to him in time of prayer. God, uh, just thank you for this time that we can come together and glorify your holy name, God. God, I just pray for you to move in this place, move through the songs that we sing. Let our songs of praise be a battle against the enemy. Let our songs of praise part the seas. Let our, let, let our songs of praise break chains in this place, God. Let you be glorified above all. Knit our hearts to yours, God. Holy Spirit, move in this place in a mighty, mighty way. Let us see you face to face, Lord. I pray for the testimonies that are going to be shared in this place, that you be glorified through them, the battles that you have won through a willing heart. God, I'm so impressed with you. I'm so in awe of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
joy I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song must end, and you never do. Throw them up. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again.
Thank you for worshiping with us. You may be seated. All right. Can we get another hand for the worship team? All right, and uh, as you know, welcome to our Friday night U-Turn for Christ service here at Calvary Chapel, Lebanon. If you're new, um, U-Turn for Christ is an addictions ministry uh, focused on restoration and God working in our lives. And, uh, and the, first, uh, the first up for the announcements is Sunday night prayer. Now, uh, we have that at Hathaway Park, and that's from 6 to 7.30 on Sunday nights. And the format for that goes is um, you, you jump online on Facebook, you turn for Christ, and send in your prayer. Or you can text Keith or I, and we'll be faithful to uh, write them down on cards. And we hand them out to the men in the room, and the men uh, lift the prayers up. So we get prayers from all around the world, um, from Africa, from India, from the Philippines. And uh, we would love to pray for you guys. So please uh, be faithful. And that's Sunday night. Um, and sometimes we aren't online, and uh, usually we'll let you know um, this coming week if we're not going to be. But uh, as far as I know, we're, we, we're going to be good this Sunday night. Uh, moving on, um, every Monday night... Uh, uh, the Once Blind Addiction Ministry, that's at Calvary Fellowship. That's with Pastor Ben um, at 6.30. You can find that on uh, YouTube. If you type in Pastor Ben Willing Vessel, it'll bring you to all the teachings that he's been doing uh, throughout the year. He's been faithful to do that on Mondays. And sometimes they add in a testimony and, or Jody will share. And uh, it's just a really good study. So I advise you during the week or if you have time on Monday to join, uh, join for that study. Um, next up is the uh, Monday night study here in the sanctuary. Um, that's with Matt Korf, and um, he's been studying through the Minor Prophets, and so it's 7 o'clock, come here for that. And they also have prayer after. Men pray with men, women with women, um, at 8 o'clock after the study. And um, he's been taking over for Pastor Tom. Um, next up, we have the U-Turn for Christ. It says new, but it's newish. Uh, we've been doing it for a few weeks now, and that's the men's prayer meeting on Tuesday night. Um, as you know, prayer is the backbone of our ministry. Um, prayer does change things. And um, if you don't have a t-shirt that says that, you'll find out about the t-shirts in a little bit. Um, so it's just a cool uh, school ministry. And the U-Turn men, they host a prayer night at Hathaway for men. Um, please, um, if you're not doing anything on Tuesday, just come on out. Or, you know, send in a prayer request on Tuesday, and we can even lift it up then. Um, we're pretty versatile with our prayers. Uh, and uh, Calvary Chapel Lebanon's Thursday afternoon study, that is uh, at the train station back here on 8th Street. That, they're in the book of Mark, and uh, Keith Zimmerman and Mark Brand has been faithful to lead that study at 2.30 p.m. Uh, 2.30 p.m. for Pastor Dwayne taking over for that. It also is uh, live streamed on uh, the Calvary Chapel page on YouTube as well. So um, tune into that. Um, a lot of good studies going on. And um, Ladies Fellowship Night uh, at the Women's Shelter, uh, actually in the Annex, um, that's at 6.30. Child care is provided, so uh, the women, if you're looking for a fellowship group, that's not on the weekend, and uh, I encourage you to come out on Thursday night, and uh, they have some food and snacks, and uh, just a good fellowship to, uh, to meet, or meet with some people. And uh, Friday afternoon, that's downstairs here. In the, in, well, it's been in the sanctuary because of the jackhammering. If you've been around during the week, you know that they've been jackhammering, and it's probably still ringing in some of the guys' ears here at First Phase. So can we get a round of applause for the First Phase guys who they come here and they, they, uh, they work and they don't complain, and it's just uh, it's a huge blessing, and uh, we just really appreciate their hard work. So uh, Pastor Dan is teaching through the book of James. Now, if you do come at 12, uh, men and women, welcome. You can get a meal downstairs. Um, you have to eat with this, uh, during the construction, but that's not a problem. And uh, you come up here at 1230, and then a Bible study here at 1230, and uh, Pastor Dan. And then sometimes he has replacements. So that's the book of James. And um, moving on, Missing Peace. You guys all know about that. That's a Saturday night, Saturday night fellowship here in the stables. Um, that's at, uh, I believe it's at 6.30. Seven. Seven. Thank you, Nick. And uh, you'll hear him from Nick in a little bit. He's, uh, he's my helper. Uh, seven o'clock, there it is. It's right in front of me. Uh, so seven o'clock on Saturday, you'll be able to come out and uh, they do teaching and, and testimony through the one-year Bible. If you haven't, uh, if you don't own a one-year Bible, it's a good way to, to read and, and check up with people and, and see who's reading the same thing and share about it as well. So, um, yep. And uh, worship and prayer night, we're going to do that on Friday, April 26th. Um, 
it's just an awesome night. Last time Joey shared, it was wonderful. So Friday, April 26th here at 6.30, um, there, it'll be a U-turn service, but it will be focusing on worship and prayer. So what an awesome night. Please put that in your calendar, invite a friend, um, get, get them out here for that. And uh, I think uh, the next slide is the CC Lab U-turn PA paintball trip. Saturday, June 1st, what a wonderful chance to hit Pastor Keith with some paintballs on his birthday. And he's not that quick, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> and if, even if you don't have a good shot, you're probably going to hit him. So um, please uh, reach out to Terry French. Uh, he'll get you going. I think it's about 100 bucks for everything all included. Um, we'll be taking some vehicles from the church that, that morning. So uh, I'll be there. So I can't wait. And um, you turn apparel. Uh, I uh, told you about this, uh, I believe, oh my gosh, this just in, uh, we're slashing prices, they're, <laughs> they're getting slashed everywhere, uh, it's $25 for a hoodie and now it's 15 for a shirt, so if you bought it full price before, we thank you for your donation, but <laughs> you have a chance to buy one for your friend and you can charge them and make a little money, no, I'm just kidding. Um, Please uh, see the guys back there. They work real hard. The t-shirts are super heavy to carry up. So can we hear for the t-shirt team? Yeah. They work no commission. They just work off, off food from the pantry. It's, we got plenty. And um, offering. Yeah, here at U-Turn, we don't take a formal offering. But uh, we do ask that you give as the Lord leads. There is a, a box in the back to mark U-Turn. You can use the QR code or the text message. And we just, uh, God loves a cheerful giver, so it's not required. But uh, if God puts it on your heart to help the ministry out, we would love it. It's a blessing. And, and, and more importantly, your prayers and just your support uh, for all the men is super important to us as well. So um, if you don't have much money, just shoot a couple of prayers up a week for us, and we would really appreciate it. And um, now, please. Please welcome the first phase overseer, Dan Barley. Hello, church. I am pleased to introduce our brother Drake to you tonight. Drake is a man of faith who loves the Lord and trusts him even in the difficult times. He desires to strengthen his relationship with God and is a man of integrity whose actions align with his beliefs. His words match his actions, making it clear that he's a trustworthy individual. Amen. With God's help, Drake has been able to overcome any challenges that come his way. When given a test, we can rest assured that Drake is, will go above and beyond to get it done. As a natural leader, it is refreshing to know that we can rely on him with tasks. We are excited to work with Drake as he takes on the role of the bunkhouse leader for the upcoming season. Drake, uh, yeah. Drake, a verse I feel fitting for you tonight is Hebrews 6.10. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers, as you still do. Ladies and gentlemen, Drake. Thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, my name is Drake, as you know. Uh, before coming to U-Turn, I thought I had my life together. Uh, I had a good job, a house to live in, and a vehicle. I grew up in a Christian home until I moved out. I always went to church, but never really had a relationship with God. And slowly started to have less of God and more of alcohol and smoking in my life. Wasn't... Uh, my life wasn't living a life that honored God and, wasn't lean, and was leaning on my own understanding and not seeking God's will in my life. But God has a way of knowing how to bring us to our knees and how that looked for me was slowly taking everything I had away from me. And everything I tried to do just didn't work out until one day I called my dad and asked if he'll take me to the mission where I met Austin which was one of the people that helped me along with Billy and Jesse to convince me to come to U-Turn. And I'm glad I did because now I can say my relationship with God is stronger than it's ever been and I have more brothers in Christ than ever before. Um, all my second phase brothers, I thank you for everything you did for me and uh, all the people that went through first phase, uh, thank you and uh, just 
enjoyed the time and the conversations we had um, and all the love you've shown me. And I'd like to thank Ben and Dan for not giving up on me and helping me in times of need. Amen. You guys helped me more than you know. And for anyone in first faith, just be still and keep seeking God. And for, all, and for those of you that didn't know, I will be dedicating three months of my second phase to be a bunkhouse leader and serve wherever I'm needed. And I just want to leave you with some verses that helped me. Um, Romans 10, uh, 19 and 20. No, that's the wrong one. <laughs> it's Romans 10, 9 and, t 9 and 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by belief in your heart that you are made right with God. And, is by, and it, it, it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. And uh, James 5, 19 and 20 for everyone that helped me back to the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wandered away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about forgiveness of many sins. And with that, that's all I got. Thank you for coming. Powerful. I first want to wave to Julian and give him a shout out. He's watching live. Um, what a powerful testimony. I have the privilege of introducing our next graduate and then we'll bring them both up and we'll give them their certificates and pray for them. Um, Nick Herman came to us eight months ago and uh, man, what a story. Uh, this guy, you're going to love his testimony. But moving into second phase six months ago with me has just really been a blessing to watch Nick go through trials and difficulties. Uh, he's really taken personally the scriptures that talk about sacrificing the flesh. Uh, he's, he actually gave up a couple toes to the Lord. But I'm telling you, this guy, I'm telling you, this guy is a miracle. He's going to be going and moving on to do a one year at the Calvary Chapel Lebanon School of Ministry, him and Sean Flynn both. So as our ministry is to win people to Christ, equip them for the ministry, it's to kick them out, send them out to further his kingdom, whether it's getting a job here or Susquehanna or Austin at the Rescue Mission or Daryl Washington serving at the uh, Jubilee Ministries. We are sending Sean and Nick out together as a team. Jesus sent out the disciples two by two, and so we're going to be sending him out for a year to serve, to teach, to continue to grow. There's no doubt that he has a calling on his life. I tried to pick one verse, Nick, and I, um, I have issues, so I'm going to have to read you. Romans 8, I think, speaks very clearly to you in this situation, uh, all the way through 18, so I'm going to read all six, seven verses here. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. God even helped you do that at uh, Weber Lumber. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, then we're heirs, heirs with God and join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together. For I consider, Nick, that, the, that your sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to compare with the glory which shall be revealed in you. Please welcome Nick Herman.
Thank you, family. Thank you, thank you. I just want to, uh, yeah, I'm just going to start from the beginning here. Um, I'm going to read a, a verse because uh, it spoke to me. It's uh, Revelation 3.20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and him with me. So it was about uh, last May. My mom and I, who's here, uh, she's going to hear some stuff tonight she might not like, but it's okay. It's okay, mom. Uh, so we were grieving, right? We were grieving heavy. I didn't grow up Christian. Uh, I was at her apartment. Uh, my brother just passed away from an overdose uh, the year before my dad died. Uh, same year, I lost my house, uh, my wife, my kids, basically my, my whole life. Um, so we're at her house and, and just grieving hard, and there, there's a knock on the door. And uh, Sunday, no one really comes to our apartment. It was a pastor, uh, Pastor Mike Hurd, from just down the road, came in, told us the gospel, and uh, everything he said sounded, the good news sounded good to me, because I was down. Um, so he, he, he's the one who set me up with uh, U-turn. Um, but before I, before I went there, I was indeed, uh, I was enslaved to a life of pain, suffering, alcohol abuse, drug addiction. Uh, I tried so many times to quit uh, in my own strength, uh, but I failed time after time. Um, I often believed the, the lies of the enemy, those, those lies that tell you uh, do, you could do it one more time, or this is the last time. Um, I had a lot of last times, and... Um, you know, finally, I, I gave up. I was, uh, I was homeless. Um, you know, I was, I was addicted to, to crack. I was addicted to heroin. I was living uh, in a tent in my car. Uh, my car got smashed in by some other addict, and uh, there went my house. At, at that point, I, I, I pretty much I, I surrendered, or I thought I surrendered. Um, I went to U-Turn, New Jersey. Uh, un under Pastor Todd, who uh, w was great. You know, he taught me discipline. Um, you know, I was, I thought I was seeking the Lord, but I, I never read the Bible. I didn't know the Word of God too well. Um, three months in, uh, I, fell, I fell for another lie of the enemy. Um, I, I did a bag of heroin. I was driving the van, and I, I overdosed behind the wheel. Um, I had a couple people with me. Uh, I woke up in a hospital, um, and I was handcuffed to a bed. And there was, uh, in the room, my friend April, my mom, Pastor Mike, and um, I, I thought I killed someone. I blacked out. I didn't, I didn't know what happened. I just knew I was handcuffed to a bed. Uh, during that transaction, uh, Pastor Mike reached out to uh, Pastor Ben, because Pastor Keith was in the Philippines, and uh, I remember Pastor Ben praying for me. Uh, I don't remember the words, um, but Ben, I love you. Um, we lift up the women's ranch. You are, girls are our sisters. We pray for you every day. And uh, that, that prayer, Ben, um, just really gave me the, the, the peace of the Lord. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of knew everything was going to be okay. Um, so I got kicked out of that U-turn, obviously, and uh, <laughs> I, I got brought here. I got dumped off at a bunkhouse at 10 at night. I didn't know what was going on, but my friend Sean was here, and uh, across the street from the bunkhouse is a park that we take care of. We serve there, and Sean said, look at that tree, Nick, that big tree. I was like, yeah, Sean, it's a, it's a big tree. I got it. He's like, no, bro, you don't get it. You're going to be that tree of righteousness. You are going to produce fruit of the Holy Spirit. And Brian Crawl said, Nick, be still. Bloom where you are planted. So I, I, I sat still. Um, you know, you, the experience in U-Turn, if, if you went to like a Bible college, it doesn't, it doesn't compare. I have so many pastors that taught me, Pastor Keith, Pastor Todd. I, I can name a list of like 40 pastors that people under U-Turn are under. It, it's a privilege. It's an honor to be here. Um, what, what our goal is here is we, we build a house. Pastor Keith gives us that blueprint, brick by brick. And the mortar that we use at U-Turn it is fellowship, it's prayer, it's the word of God, it's serving, it's building that house on that rock so we could have a future. Danny, you know what I'm talking about. Danny loves to build that house. So 
Uh, I mean, this is just a, a great experience. Great, great family. Um, I, you know, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for uh, friend Josh up there. We pray for each other. That's what we do at U-Turn, and, and, and prayer changes things. I didn't even like Josh. Now I love him. Uh, he's my prayer partner. Uh, he can't do anything wrong in my eyes because I pray for him, and he prays for my mom. He prays for my kids. I pray for his mom, his dad. We know each other. We worship each other in spirit, and that's what it's all about, just being in the spirit of God, praising Jesus, and, and having fellowship, true fellowship. Richard knows true fellowship when spirit and spirit connect. You know, we are in God's right mighty hand. And that verse spoke to me. We are in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus, and, and, and we're standing in victory. So let, let us all just stand in victory, build that house upon a rock, and, and just go your course. But put Jesus first. When he moves, you move. Uh, amen. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Dude, that was fire. That was awesome. Thank you so much for that. Super excited for these guys. All right, I got a couple certificates here. I believe this first one's for Drake. Uh, can, can we give the Lord a hand this time for just, oh my gosh. It's, I, I think we get jaded uh, seeing miracle after miracle. These young women, Willow Street, Dora, all the ministries. Listen, if you're here from Rescue Mission or... Uh, Jubilee, it, it is so amazing just to be able to be in a, a position to watch God take a broken life and not just heal it, but, but radically change it to be built up, to be sent out to further his kingdom. And then, so that's what we're doing here. So Drake, this is for you, first phase graduate. Nick, that's for you. Uh, when our second phase graduates uh, graduate, we also have uh, the Martins, uh, bless us and some of the other ministries with an engraved uh, Bible. So that's a New Living Translation Bible. It also comes with a little promise book. Amen. And so if you, it just as we are in the tradition of doing, again, we are a ministry of prayer. God showed uh, all of us long ago that he's going to do more through our prayers than anything else we do here. And it's your prayers. You can participate. You someday will be in heaven and receive an eternal reward for, for your faithfulness to lift up these men and women who go through these different programs. So I'm going to pray. Reach out your hand to them, and we'll just lift them up to the Lord. God, we thank you so much for these two. God, we thank you for your, their hand, your hand on their lives. Lord, we give you all the glory. There's no man, no church, no ministry that can do the miraculous change that we've seen in these men in such a short period of time. And so I just pray you'd continue to move, give them a thirst for your word, help them to trust you, to walk with you. Give them time in prayer. Stir the gifts within them. And so as Drake goes into second phase, three months at the bunkhouse, three months at probably Hathaway House, just raise them up to do great things. Lord, blow our minds. And for Nick, Lord, thank you for him. Use them in the school of ministry then this next year and continue to be glorified in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Who's is that? Yours? Amen. All right. So I, before we uh, break for fellowship, just for a couple minutes, um, I do want to reiterate a couple announcements. And so uh, the first one is, actually, I'll just do one announcement. Um, but uh, I, I want to encourage you to, to and, and the ladies as well. Uh, last year we had, I think, Daisy, and who else went with? Uh, uh, Janelle went with us. And we had, well, I have a picture from last year's trip. Actually, it's, this is us at the end of the day. This is a real tank. Uh, that's me, the size of a tank there in the green. That was this time last year, about 30 pounds ago. Um, and so we had such a great trip. And, and so it's just a fun day. And we go into different courses. If, it's $98. It's not cheap, but it's very, it's the largest paintball course in the nation. And, and it's, I don't know how many hundred acres, but they've got different scenes of, it's like, uh, if you remember Westworld, they go into the Western scene and then you go into the, the castle and then different type of terrain and, and you get on different teams and they give you a, a paintball gun and 
masks and stuff. And so, yes, it is the opportunity to shoot at a pastor and not get in trouble. So Ben and I were both pastors here at U-Turn, and you're allowed to shoot us in the head with a very uh, high-velocity projectile and not get in trouble for it. And so, like Brent said, I am kind of slow. I'm going to be 62 next in June. And so, but we are kind of sad because our, our two favorite guys in the ministry, both their initials are MJ, Mike Jones and Michael Justice, don't put it up yet, are unable to attend this year because they're going to actually be at the U-Turn brisket roast in Texas on my birthday. So they won't be here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a special fundraiser. And so we're going to take Mike, when they come back, and Mike Jones, we're going to dress them up. And, and for a dollar, a paintball, you can shoot them throughout the day. And then we're going to dress them up. Let's see the picture. Uh, you can actually shoot at Mike Jones and Mike just... I'm joking. We're not going to do it. That was just a joke. Anyways, I'm so mean. That was so mean. Look, Mike looks like he's like five foot four. It's like, I love that picture. Thanks to Ch Chad Campbell, does all of our graphics here at U-Turn for Christ. Anyways, let's all stand, find one or two people we've never met, greet one another, and then get ready to get in the Word. Did you see me hawk at you the other day? I think so. Awesome. All right. All right, if we could start making our way to our seats, please. We're going to go ahead and get started. Is it? Is that better? Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and grab a seat, please. All right, you guys are getting a little sloppy with the agape. Let's grab a seat. Sloppy agape is okay. So one other announcement, actually two other announcements uh, I wanted to make. Um, we have guest worship next week. Uh, Pastor Ben is going to be teaching starting in Romans 6, 1. Uh, I will finish Romans 5 tonight, God's will, that the Lord wills. And, uh, and then next week, Pastor Ben's going to teach starting the book of Romans. We have guest worship. We've had them out several times. It's uh, a worship team that came through Teen Challenge. If you're familiar with them, Adult Teen Challenge is an addiction, faith-based addiction ministry. Really talented guys. And then the following week, uh, Joey is going to be leading us with some members from the, the Bridge of Hope worship team that, that many of you know about are just super anointed uh, we're so blessed with so much talent here and so super excited 
uh, we'll be doing seven, hopefully eight, maybe worship songs, a little time of prayer in the middle. Um, and so excited about that. Keep that marked in your calendars, please. Uh, next week, guest worship. The week after, the whole night is going to be worship and prayer. Tonight's message, if we could get the slide up, Josh, the melodrama of mankind, Romans 5, 12 to 21. The melodrama. Melodrama meaning overemphasized or hyperdramatic. I, I don't know about you, but I learned to be a drama queen at a very early age to get things that I needed in life. I learned very quickly to overemphasize and make things dramatic and be theatrical. And, and, and actually, I'm still a lot that way today. When I get sick, it's like, oh, I need a nurse and I need a doctor and I need the ER. And speaking of ERs, you know, there's something about addicts that come into our program. Dan, how many times have you, you've only been here a year. How many times do you think you've been to the ER in that year? Dozens, right? You can't even, Brent, you've been here three years. How many times? Too many times. It, for some reason, when we come to a program and we begin, and I think part of it's the drugs and the alcohol, and sometimes it's not over-dramatized. I, I tend to go in one direction or the other. Like, I, I could be dying from COVID, and it's like, no, I'm okay. I'm not going to the hospital. Uh, or, or I'm over-dramatic. I'm melodramatic. And so uh, I see that too in our ministry. Guys come in with a headache or uh, I got to go to the ER because I have diarrhea. Uh, again, ER stands for emergency room. You're not supposed to go to the ER unless it's an emergency. I actually have a funny little uh, uh, video I want to show you if we could put that up. Thank you, man. Feels great. I'm feeling good. I Turn the actually... volume up, Mike. Just recently had to go to the emergency room, though, and I had some stomach virus thing. I almost called an ambulance. It's weird, even considering calling an ambulance for yourself. You know? Mike. You call ambulances for other people, right? What are you supposed to say about yourself? Can you come get me? <laughs> yeah, I don't feel so good. Just come on and I'll be lying on the floor. Just looking at the phone going, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. It was at night, so I drove myself to the emergency room. That's a nice relaxing drive. No, after you. Merge, everybody, merge. I'm only imploding. So I, I pull up at the entrance to the emergency room. No valet parking. I mean, if that's not the biggest oversight in our solar system. If there's ever a time where you want to go, can you park this? Because I need to collapse immediately. But no, I'm circling around a parking lot. Can I park there? I think I'm going to die. I'm dying too. Okay, go ahead. I'll go up a couple levels. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't care if you're driving yourself or someone else to the emergency room. You still want to get out and run in with them. Are you supposed to drop somebody off and go park a car? Okay, you go in. Tell them you're shot. They validate. Thank you, Josh. Thank Appreciate you, that. Feels great. So you're gonna I'm have feeling to good. That, I right? actually just recently had to go to the emergency room, though. Feels great. Thanks. All right. So I'm sorry. I've I've been obviously having a Brian Reagan uh, comedy craze in the last few weeks. I thought it would be nice for us to be able to get a couple chuckles. But the the point being, listen, uh, we are melodramatic people. We tend to overemphasize. In our study in the second half of Romans 5 this evening, this is nothing short of a true life melodrama on every level. It's literally life and death 
on steroids and not over-dramatized. To put it mildly, it's a powerful emotional depiction of the course of humanity from beginning to end, and it's all in living color, just in our, 12 ver in our 10 verses tonight. Now, most Bible scholars agree this is the one of the most powerful yet difficult passages to comprehend and to fully absorb. R. Kent Hughes says this, it is universally agreed that the passage before us is one of the greatest theological sections in the entire Bible. In its 10 verses, Paul summarizes the theology of the preceding chapters about lost man and his rescue through God's provision. But listen, God doesn't stop with just our rescue from ruin. In our passage, we see the plan of our amazing Lord and Savior is far greater than simply rescuing us from our sins. It also includes bringing us back into our original position of ruling and reigning with him in righteousness and glory for all eternity. You see, before sin, before the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, before, before humanity was ruined and death came, sin, death came with sin, man was, was created by God to live forever in paradise and to rule and reign under God's authority. Genesis 1, 26 to 28 says, Then God said, Let us, speaking of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, Make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. You were created to be a ruler. That's actually our problem in ministry. In, it's our problem in addiction. It's our problem that we see. It's not drugs and alcohol. It's the unwillingness to come under God's authority. We don't have a drug problem. We have an authority problem. And so, but the, the deal is we were created to rule and reign, but not our own lives. We were created for him to rule and reign over us and then for him under his authority to rule and reign with, ever, with whatever he has given us. So in the beginning, we see, we see, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it as a ruler. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Revelation 5, 9 to 10, tells us that's not... That was the original design. Sin and death came into the picture. And then it says, and then they sang a new song. This is at the end, once Jesus has restored his authority and torn down the kingdom of Satan, he says, you are worthy. It says, actually supposed to say, uh, and they sang a new song. That's us in heaven. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. We just sang about it. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us in eternity kings and priests to our God. We shall reign once again on the earth. And do you know that you're actually in that position spiritually even now? Might not feel like it. Might not look like it. It, it has everything to do with your humility. Pride ruins your ability to rule and reign now. But, but as you submit to God and surrender to his authority over your life, we see in 1 Peter 2, 9, next slide please, Josh. But you are a chosen generation, a royal, a ruling, a, a, a king and queen priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So if you are taking notes, and I always encourage the taking of notes, if you're a serious student of God's word, the melodrama of mankind, number one, we see the ruin of man in the first three verses. In Romans 5, 12 to 14, we see we're reminded of all four previous chapters of, of uh, all have fallen short of the glory of God and the penalty for that sin. And we see the ruin of man. We are once again reminded in the next 
five verses, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, the rescue of man, and then the reign of man in our final two verses. So let's get right into the text, Romans 5, 12 to 21. It says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no, is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who is to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, speaking of Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one, capital M, man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came through the one, much more those who receive, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped it, but the free gift came from, from but the free gift came, I was right, from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. And this sums it all up. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your work on the cross, God, that opened up a pathway for us to be forgiven and to come to know you and to walk with you and to live with you in eternity in paradise forever and ever. And so, God, as we tear apart these verses, as we dissect them, as we go deeper into your word, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would be our teacher, God, and that you would keep me small and out of the way, and that, God, that your word would go out and penetrate hearts and minds on an individual level. There's some here, Lord, that need encouragement. There's some that need a hug tonight. There's some to be, need to know that there's grace upon their lives. There's others, Lord, we need conviction, we need correction, we need the rebuke of your word, we need instruction in righteousness. So, Lord, we give you full reign and full freedom to be our teacher, and we pray you'd keep away distractions as you anoint the giving and the receiving of this word. Help us tonight, tomorrow, next week to go out and apply what we learn. God, that we would not just be hearers, but doers of your word, all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Back to our outline. The, me- the mellow drama of mankind begins with the ruin of mankind. Let's just look at the first three verses. Romans 5, 12 to 14. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is, when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. There's kind of a ring going on, Mike. I don't know if you can fix that. Listen, the absolute, undeniable evidence of this verse is that every last person born in this world has died without exception every baby born has eventually died you are going to die with the exception of enoch god took him home at the age of 365 you see listen god designed man to live forever in paradise with him god's original plan did not include death life not death Until Adam sinned, there was no death in the world. 
That's why you see in the Old Testament, some of these men lived 900, almost 1,000 years old. Methuselah lived to be 969, even after sin and death had come. And so even secular scientists, now I don't know if I used to, prior to becoming a Christian, my God was physics, metaphysics, uh, metaphysical philosophy, science, and, and uh, I used to worship it. Um, and there, there was an author, there is an author, he's no longer alive, his name is Buckminster Fuller. Probably, how many of you heard of him, other than probably Michael Justice has probably heard of him? Nobody. He was a physicist, he was also an inventor. He, in, he was a brilliant man, he invented the geodesic dome. The most stable, the most stable structure that you can build is not a house. You realize a house, a square, is not very stable. When storms hit a house, it really depends upon the nails and the contractor and the quality of materials because a square is not a very stable force. In fact, building a house with a roof with an eave is actually a really bad idea. When, when we went to the Philippines four years ago, we took all those eaves out and all the houses stopped having the re roofs, the U-turn facilities in the Philippines. Buckminster Fuller designed the geodesic dome. What's the most stable uh, uh, object? It's a triangle uh, or, uh, or a pyramid. It's the most stable. He created a dome made up of triangles so when, when, when pressure is put on that structure, it actually implodes on itself and becomes more stable. Brilliant man, this is what he said when he observed over time the human body, he said this, by natural observation of the human body, it is very clear that by design, man was created to live forever. Now it's hard to comprehend that, but when you realize that your skin replaces itself, your blood cells replace itself, the human body is constantly regenerating itself. God knew what he was doing when he put it all together. Sin and death, catch this, all right? Sin and death come naturally because it continues to rule and reign as God promised Adam in the garden. It's a byproduct of the fall. Life and righteousness must be pursued and sought after like climbing a mountain. In heaven, it won't be that way. There will be no more death, no more sorrow. Right now, you have to press in. You have to decide to worship God. You've got you to get up and develop a habit of praying every morning and studying your Proverbs and reading the word. It doesn't... What comes natural is running from God. That's why we continue to have that. I don't care how long you've walked with God or know God. There's still a sinful nature that lives within you that someday when you get a new body will be gone. Another example, sin and death is like riding a bicycle downhill. While life and righteousness is like riding a bike uphill. It won't be that way in heaven, but here and now in this fallen world and in our fallen state, because death is spread to all men, it is the way. This is the way. For my Mandalorian fans, like two people got it. Me, Chad, and, Lino and Linnea. Anyways, moving on. Sorry, I had to get that in there. Let's, don't take my word. What does the word say? Look, look at why the word says what it says. Josh, please, next slide. Proverbs 15, 24. The way of life, the way of righteousness winds upward for the wise, that he may turn away from hell below. It's easy to do drugs and not go to work and party with your friends all night. I ruined a, a, an amazing party one night with a bunch of tweakers playing cards, girls, so much fun. The sun starts coming up and I'm the Christian in the room, right? I'm like get convicted and guilty and I hear people at four in the morning starting their motors to go to work and provide for their family. And I, of course, said the most inappropriate thing that you want to say at a card table with a bunch of people up for three or four nights. I was like... Those are the real heroes in life. That guy's getting up to support his family. We're a bunch of losers sitting here partying. And they kicked me out. I didn't, wasn't welcome in that house anymore after that. But, but listen, 
Sin spreads like cancer. Just look around you. The gospel must be carried into the lost world and preached by tongue and by deed. But we're to keep our distance from fellowship with the world and sin. Otherwise, it will spread and corrupt us. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be deceived. Evil company. Evil company corrupts good habits. Good company cannot corrupt bad habits. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to, to put down any movement of the Lord, but, but I've always... And, and, Ray Comfort will agree with me. Lifestyle evangelist, if I just be a good enough Christian, if I, just, if I just really love God enough, my neighbors will get saved. No, you need to tell your neighbors. You need to open your mouth. You need to preach. Now, granted, I'm not saying don't be a good example. That's necessary. That's vital. That's, that's automatic. 2 Corinthians says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Listen to what Gutzik says about this, this principle of death and sin. He says, the principle of death was introduced into the world when Adam sinned, and it has reigned on earth ever since. Every grave is mute evidence to the spread and reign of sin since the time of Adam. So in our outline, once again, the melodrama of mankind, overall ending, uh, 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 arching banner over mankind is the ruin of man and the rescue of man. When I think of rescue, I was going to date myself. I always think of Mighty Mouse. Here I am to save the day. Well, that's, that's my idea of Jesus. I'm sorry, uh, Mike Jones, Mighty Mouse, can take out Batman and Superman with one hand tied behind his back. Don't, don't respond. Talk to me later. He, he, he just came out like this. <laughs> Sorry. Let's read it. Mighty Mouse. I don't know why I needed to share that. Romans 5, 15 and 19 says this. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many, not all. The sin spread to everybody. Grace is, is available to everybody. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. That's actually our third point. Therefore, sums it up. Therefore, as through one man's offense, Adam's sin, judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, Jesus, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be righteous. Now, this portion of Scripture is literally a stark contrast between the work of Adam... And the, con and the consequences of death and the work of Jesus Christ and the availability of grace and life for all who receive the gift. Look at R. Kent Hughes again, his quote on this. He says, as a result of Adam's offense, many died. The world in which we know is not the land of the living, but the land of the dying. Jesus gives a free gift that has consequences for the entire race, but in a different way. Through the gift, free gift of Jesus, the grace of God abounded to many. Adam's work brought death, but Jesus' work brings grace. Abundant grace, abounding to many, the gift of righteousness, and reigning in life. Now, I love this study of names. If you're, if you're going to be serious, uh, where's Nick? Sean's not here tonight. A lot of you guys that are leaders, I have 
elders in this room, pastors, many of you are serious students of God's word. If you're going to be, you need to become a word hound. You need to own a dictionary. You should probably have a Bible dictionary. Uh, there's apps that you can have <clears throat> um, uh, all kinds of, of uh, apps to open up the original language of the Hebrew. I love to study names. You can actually see the work of Jesus and the work of Adam in their names. Adam, pull up the next slide, in the Hebrew, Adam is not an English name. It's not an English word. It's actually a Hebrew word that's pronounced Adam, and it, it means man. God named the first man, man. And, and it also can be mankind. And so, uh, even the Hebrew is Shavra and means life giver. It also can mean first woman. Adam was the first man, and when Adam sinned, so did all of mankind, because within Adam's seed was all of mankind. We are all related to Adam, regardless of race, creed, or color. All the races existed within Adam's DNA. So we see Adam's story, his work of sin, even in his name. In Jesus, the name Jesus, next slide, is is the Greek word for Joshua, which comes from the Hebrew name Yesh Yehoshua. Yehoshua actually means Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. Jesus' name actually is defined as his work in the world in which we live. It says it in Matthew, gives us a clearer picture. In Matthew 121, and she will bring forth a son, speaking of Mary, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from, his, from their sins. That's what his name means. So again, like last week, I think it's important just to take a minute to consider carefully if you are truly one of his people. It says, for he will save his people from their sins. Not all people, his people. And so Adam's unrighteous act of rebellion against God, sin spread to everybody whether you liked it or not. You were a part of Adam when he sinned. You are born into sin. You are a sinner by choice. And the penalty for that sin is death. No choice. You're in, unfortunately, the Adam's family. Appropriate name. Dun, 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 dun. Anyways, all right. So, but fortunately, there exists another family we do have a choice to belong to. You must choose the free gift of salvation through the only one who can save us, Jesus Christ, God's only son. To choose God is to trust God and put your faith in God and not in Adam, not in mankind, not in your sinful flesh, and therein lies the problem. Most people don't want the God of the Bible because they don't want to give up or even try to surrender the right to the throne of their own life. That, in a nutshell, is the problem with humanity. That's the road to ruin. It's so, it's so carefully explained in our next slide, John 3, 16 to 21. In this, we have the problem and the solution turned around. So we're given the solution first, and then the problem, which I just described to you. Let's read it. Here's the solution. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in his he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And, and this is the condemnation. Here is the problem. That the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Ray Comfort tells 
uh, an incredible story. I love this picture. Uh, Ray Comfort's an evangelist from Southern California. He, he wrote a book called Hell's Best Secret. He, he uses the law to show unsaved people their need for a savior. Very effective. I've been in the streets with him in Santa Monica, uh, uh, Third Street Promenade, and just a powerful man of God. He paints a picture of humanity. And this is the picture he paints. It's it's like being on a a jumbo jet, flying at 35,000 feet, and all the windows are closed. And everybody's enjoying, and they're up and around, and they're having their cocktails, and they're talking about their uh, uh, Um, savings accounts and the things they're going to do in their life and uh, what they're going to do on the vacation they're headed to and how they're how they are headed home and what a great vacation they had and then there's noticed on the plane somebody with a parachute that's kind of awkward somebody on the plane a modern jumbo jet with a giant uncomfortable parachute people make fun of them People laugh at them, ridicule them, but see, here's the deal. Everybody else doesn't realize, except that guy with the parachute, that the wings are on fire. And that's humanity. And people that have had their eyes opened, people that have peeked out of the little window in the airliner, they know the truth. You know the truth. And so you should be able to share with others the importance of having. It is awkward being a Christian. We are laughed at. We are looked down upon. But listen, we are going to survive the landing and they are not. Amen? And so again, if you're not in the family, if you have yet to choose the Lord, now is the day. Now is the time. People that have had their minds opened, they've had the light turned on, are people that, uh, you might still be afraid to share your faith, and granted, I don't always uh, uh, walk into every grocery store and preach uh, to everybody that comes across my path, but listen, there should be a yearning, there should be a conviction in your spirit, and, and, and again, I'm not here to condemn you, but you're getting ripped off if you're not says in Romans, I'm sorry, Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. It also says in Romans, this verse is for Nick, how beautiful are the feet, regardless of how many toes, of those who preach. I'm sorry, you, you, know, you know I had to pick on you, bro. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Since we're running out of time, our third point. Best point for last. The melodrama of mankind. Number one, the ruin of man. Number two, the rescue of man. And number three, the reign of man. Look at the last two verses, Romans 5, 20 and 21. I've been living out these verses for months. And it's... It's been devastating. Because sometimes for you to see clearly the grace of God, he's got to show you how ugly your heart is. Romans 5, 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come now to this apex in Romans. We're coming to the mountaintop, the climax, the entire, this entire letter to the church in Rome, this is the peak of it. He states that the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Leave that verse up there. Some translations, accurate translations, the NASB, the ESV, the NIV, the the King James, says now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. You see, the law was never given to make us do right. 
Paul makes this clear later in Romans 7. And then here in Galatians 3, look what he says. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come, Jesus, to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now catch this last part if all that didn't make sense. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. You see, where there there is law, we sin more. Just like a little kid. If he's playing and you point out to not touch the cookie jar, what do you think that little boy's now going to want to do? Get some cookies. Before that was said, he might not have noticed it. Where there is law, we sin more, both in terms of quantity and depth. But in doing this, now listen, catch this. This is is heavy doctrine most people can't comprehend. And I'm going to try to bring it to you as clearly as I can. So as we sin, the law actually moves us closer to grace because the farther we descend, the nearer we are to brokenness and thus to Christ. Now listen, sin brings death. I'm not saying sin, uh, it's okay to sin. In fact, if you go later into Romans 6, 1, it says, well, we're under grace. All things are lawful. Why not just keep sinning? No, it says certainly not. How can we who have been forgiven sin any longer? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? That's the first couple verses of Pastor Ben's teaching next week. But this is why Paul says victoriously, but where sin abounded... Grace abounded much more. Now look, go back to that verse, one slide. Where sin abounded, grace abounded. Two different words, same English word. Two different Greek words. The Greek word for abounded in regards to sin is plain pleonazo, pleonazo. It means to increase, to abound. It also means to superabound in sin. Paul said he was the greatest of all sinners, a super sinner. He was the least of all the saints. Now this this Greek word for abounded as as according to grace, next slide, the Greek word for abounded in regards to grace, completely different word. It's the word huperperisio-o, it means to exceedingly superabound over and abundantly. It's actually the ultra or the overtop version of the other word. Credible, incredible. This word pictures unending. Listen, you need to hear this. Those of you that are in bondage to you do good one day and you feel forgiven and loved and blessed and you do bad the next day and you walk in guilt and shame. Listen, sin has a penalty. We, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable, Paul said. You commit sin, you will die. Something will die. Sin brings death. But if you could ruin your salvation, you would. And we'd all be condemned to hell. God's grace where your I don't care how big your sin is. God's arms are wider. Much wider. And I'm so grateful. Because there's no way I could come up here. I, 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 I would be the hip, biggest hypocrite if it wasn't for the grace of God. This picture is a picture of a loving father's arms who are stretched so very wide, much wider than any sin you've ever done or even imagined to do. Listen, the majority, 
And this is just to close in a, just a personal thought here. The majority of my personal growth as a Christian over the last 32 years hasn't come from me figuring out how to be better or do better. It, it's come from God forgiving me when I sin and don't deserve it. It's when God covers me with his grace when he should fry me and expose me in front of everybody. It comes from his grace working in our lives. That's why it says in Romans 2.4, this is the new, uh, new, uh, the new American Standard Bible, supposedly the most accurate of all the translations. It says, do not think lightly of the riches of his kindness and restraint and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. It's his grace that changes you into the image of his son. It's not a license to sin, but man, it, can you think about it deeply just for a second? How could it be any other way? He is so brilliant and so amazing and so profoundly wonderful to not just send his son to die and live a perfect sinless life and now I put my faith in his son and all my sins are now on his son and I'm forgiven and guaranteed heaven but now the life and the love and the grace and the mercy are all available for those who walk according to the spirit. Those that trust him and love him and walk with him and, and try to get to know him. In closing, if I could have Joey and Becca come back up. No, I'm not sure if Becca's closing. No? Yes, you are. Actually, Becca and the baby. Three leading worship tonight. I want to get to know that baby as soon as it can talk. I have an old hymn for you. I don't know who it is. You hymn lovers. Speaking of God's grace, this is an old saint that wrote this. Have you on the Lord believed? Still there's more to follow. Of his grace, have you received? Still there's more to follow. Oh, the grace the Father shows, still there's more to follow. Freely his, he is grace bestows, still there's more to follow. To follow. More and more and more and more. Always more to follow. Oh, his matchless, boundless love. Still, there's more to follow. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to close with the song Reckless Love by Corey Ashbery. Speaks to this point. It says, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was his foe, still you fought, your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Let's all stand and close in worship. If we could have men praying with men and women with women.
with you. He sums up beautifully this entire portion of scripture. It says, we need first to review the greatness of our ruin. This is where we must always begin. This is why Christ so completely undressed mankind in the Beatitudes. Before we can reign, we must be brought low. That's why I said, blessed are the poor in spirit in Matthew 5.3. Our solidarity with Adam and the rest of humanity in sin must be reiterated. All our existence is colored by sin, and our ruin in Adam is great. There is no human remedy. Having reviewed our ruin, we need next to review the greatness of our rescue. We must set before our conscience the incomparable work of the matchless second Adam. Jesus. It is so supreme that it not only remedies Adam's own transgression, but all the sins ever committed by all people who ever lived. The profound contemplation of our ruin and our rescue restore us so we can reign again properly. <clears throat> At risk of making this too simple, leave with this. I believe this can all be summed up in one word, love. Our healing and subsequent reign in life come as we contemplate, receive, and walk in God's love. Knowing God's love, allowing his affection to permeate every corner of our lives, we will reign in life to his glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless your people as they go. Fill them with your spirit. Help us to walk in newness in life. Help us to be ambassadors and priests and kings to this lost world in which we live. Be glorified. Let your son receive the reward of his suffering on the cross. Our lay eyes, our lives laid down for your bidding, not our own. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.